Greetings, Zero here, and welcome back to my EV Emerald Deal Monotype run. So, yep, it actually happened. Um, I got 10 followers on Rumble before episode 40 debuted, so as promised, I'm going to also be being the conscious and only skill types. I'm pretty sure the vast majority of them were spam bots, but, well, I didn't say they had to be real followers. So, yeah. I'm gonna have to see what I have that would be suitable for contest use. But first, let's go down to, uh... Let's see. Yeah. We're gonna go down to, uh, Lily Coast City. Give me a sec. So those of you wondering why I might sound different, uh, well, my mic broke the other day, so I had to order a new one. And, uh, this one's not as good necessarily, but, well, it is what it is. So... First, I guess I could show you how the, uh, well, how to make Pokeblocks, because we're going to need that. So, we have to use these blenders right here. And, uh, so... Well, this is just going to be a throwaway, basically, so let's just pick a... I'm not actually going to use this, I'm we'll just throw this in there. So, you want to make sure that you're not using the same berry as everyone else, otherwise it'll dilute it and make it worse. It's stupid. I don't know why it does that, but whatever. So, when the arrow in the middle, when the dial in the middle points at your arrow, you press A to try and get as many, well, perfect hits as possible. You want it to spin as fast as possible. Of course, the AI here is fucking stupid, but, uh, well, predictably, actually, no. Well, I got the most hits in general. So, that was a purple polka block. The higher the level, the more effective it's going to be at boosting the characteristics you want, and the lower the feel, the, uh, the more of them you can feed to a Pokemon, because the feel affects what's called the sheen of a Pokemon, it's a value between 0 and 255. 255 is the highest that is the highest that it can be, and the feel of a Pokeblock is added to whatever your Pokemon's sheen is. So, lower feel is good, higher level is good. And, uh, well, I guess I could show you how to feed it to one. I'm not actually going to feed it to any of the Pokemon I'm going to use, so we'll just... Just for demonstration's sake, we're gonna give it to Pelipper here. And now if, if it's of a flavor it likes, it depends on the nature, it'll say it happily ate it. If it disliked it, it'll say it disdainfully ate it. If it's neutral, it'll just say it ate it. And coolness and cuteness both went up. Anyways, now I need to make a bunch of Poke Blocks and pick what Pokemon I want to use first. I think I actually know what I'm going to use. More of this later. Okay, so say hello to Ripper, the Magneton. This is going to be our Pokemon for the coolness contest. Moves that I've given it is Thunder Shock, so General Appeal move, Thunder Wave, Badly Sorrows all Pokemon that make good appeals, Rain Dance, and Thunder are used for a contest combination. We'll see what that looks like in a bit. Now, of course, there's also the scarfs we could get, but we can't get that yet because the damn guy in the Pokemon fan club wants to see a Pokemon that's got a contest ribbon first. So that means we actually have to compete in the normal contest first. And we're going to be beating all five categories, by the way. Maybe not all in one episode, but... We will be beating all five with just Steel types. Yo, Ronar. <clears throat> ah, do the same thing I am, you see. Hot deal. And Ripper. 
Oh, it's hard to see. That's an indication of your Pokemon's condition. That's why you feed Pokeblocks your Pokemon. The preliminary round gives you a massive boost, but the part that really matters is coming up. <clears throat> but, based on how you did there, that determines the order you go in. So, we are going to start off strong with Thundershock. And because it appeals to that particular category of contest, I get an extra point. The crowd gets a little more excited. If you max it out, it goes up to five points. Then what ends up happening is, uh, well, you get a massive boost to your score. It's all about timing. But there is strategy to it as well. You act basically just try to screw over the AI if you can. Likewise, the AI will try to screw you as well. And you're going to be up. Yeah, you're going to be up front, so let me guess. Now you're going to use the move and steal it. Okay, fine. Be that way. Then we're going to fuck him over. Yep. Called it. Because, of course, it was first, so now it's really going to get a massive... Well, actually, no. Ronar might. If not... No, I think that's a tough move. But that means I'm gonna get the extra bonus, and I'm gonna fuck over that Pidgeotto. Sucks to be you. Obliviousness means it basically can't be startled, but those moves don't generally make a lot of appeal points. Oh yeah, and Rage is one of those moves where there are certain moves that you can use over and over again without pissing off the, uh, the Judge. Like Rage and Hidden Power. Okay, we're gonna run Thundershock again. Because otherwise, if you use the same move over and over again, then, uh, well, you'll get diminishing returns. Okay, it's gonna spam Aerial Ace again. That's really the only move you're gonna use? Okay, Totodile, whatever you say. Yeah, I it's going to use Aerial Lace and just fuel the show. Takedown means that you can be Star more easily. But since you're last, since he was last, you didn't have anything to lose from it. Alright. Do it, I dare ya. Oof. Yeah, it wasn't as good as you thought it would be, huh? Well, we didn't get to use any contest combinations this time around. Because that damn Pidgeotto we keep having to counter. But I'm still in the lead. Last round. Let's go for a strong one. And we're actually going to use Rain Dance this time around, I think. Yeah. Because the crowd's really excited, so that means I'm going to do better. And it's tough, so it doesn't make the crowd more excited, 
but it doesn't hurt their enthusiasm either. I'm pretty sure I've won this anyway. Oh, Toadel might actually get that appeal with Rage. Yep. They did nothing but spam that move all the, the whole contest. That is a viable strategy, actually. Like, I've won a Master Ranks or Cleverness or Smartness contest before in a uh, one of my playthroughs just by spamming Hidden Power over and over again. And now this is where everything is counted up. And I am pretty damn sure I won, just to look at that initial appeal score. Now, in the Master Rank contest, that's another story, because the Master Rank, well... Everyone kind of has a high appeal, so it are, it largely comes down to luck, and, well, the AI does kind of cheat a little. In the sense that it will... It will do its best to try and fuck you over, specifically. Because the AI, well, the AI wins as long as you don't. That's our first ribbon. Now, we can also talk to this guy and give him an interview. Yep, we'll do that. Uh... We're gonna say it was, eh, was kind of easy, to be honest. What here when I think of cool? Well, when I think of cool, I think of heavy metal. That's not a maybe, it, it will make it to TV. And you can see the picture of your Pokemon sketched from that contest. Now, we gotta go over to Slateport City. So now we're here in the Pokemon uh, fan club, and we talk to this asshole. Uh-huh. Sure, sure, sure. And the red scarf will actually give you a slight edge in the preliminary rounds. So it's actually really good to get. And there's one for each category. So, let's give it to Ripper, and I'm going to head back to Lily Cove City. I think it's going to wrap it up for this time, ladies and gentlemen. Next time, we're going to be taking on the next rank of contests. We're going to be beating each category one at a time. So, if you like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page, and I will catch you all next time.